Welcome back to GearWire.com. My name is Jake Kuhn, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Behringer BCF2000. It's the 8-channel fader version. They also offer the BCR2000, which is an 8-channel rotary version, which features 24 rotary knobs instead of the faders. Um, we'll be showing you how to use it today with Ableton Live, and let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, so as you can see here, we do have the 8 faders. They are motorized. They're 100 millimeter throw, so they're a rather long throw. Over here to the right, we have four different assignable buttons. Not quite transport, which I wish we had on here, but still functional. Um, we have the preset buttons above that for the 32 different preset. It's nice to have 32 presets on this. It allows you to do many different things. Control your DAW, also control any software since you have running um, independently on another setup. Above that, you have the uh, basic buttons for the B control itself, um, the store, edit, exit, and learn. Um, these are all different ways to program the um, different MIDI controls and MIDI functions. And also, Learn allows you to send the MIDI functions from the DAW to the controller in order for it to be assigned that way. So it's kind of flexible in that way. You have above that two rows of eight buttons each. Um, I typically use them just for channel on and off to arm the record. Um, you can use them for anything you like. Uh, above that, we have a row of encoders. Um, they are LED, uh, so they do show the active value. Um, they're infinitely rotating, so they're not detented at all. It's a nice, smooth rotation. Um, they also have a push function on them, which can be assigned a separate function uh, from the rotor itself. You have four different encoder groups per preset, which is a nice function. Um, so you have up to 64 um, different knobs and buttons. So you can turn a filter off, turn an effect off, um, whatever you'd like to do, affect a macro. And on the back of this controller, you'll see we have the MIDI foot switch function. Um, there's an A and a B jack for two separate switches. There's also the ability for the A jack to uh, use a dual jack input. Um, in that case, the B jack um, is rendered and functional. Uh, connects via USB like we had mentioned before, and it also has the standard MIDI in, out, and through. So if you want to go ahead and use this in uh, conjunction with the rotating knob one, um, you can do that as well. Now we're going to check it out. Uh, in the context of a, a live performance, um, I'm also able to use this controller um, as a live performance controller. You can deactivate the motorized faders um, so you don't do any damage to the motors during a live performance, um, which is another nice function uh, of this controller. So I basically created some stock Ableton loops here. Um, we've put them together, and I'm just going to show you a few of the functions that you're able to do um, in the versatility of this controller. And I have the buttons up here just simply assigned to the track on and off. You'll see the yellow start to glow as I drop in parts. And as you start mixing your different parts, bringing them in louder, you know, turning up the bass and whatnot, uh, you're going to see the faders move on the screen as well with your movements. You take the mallets out here, they come out up there, and push them simply back up. Okay? Up top, we have the rotary encoders on the first group set to the panning. So say you want to take your mallets over to the left side, you're just going to go ahead and move your rotary encoder over to the left. You're going to find that your LED will also reflect that change so you can see that. Now, as you switch over to the other encoder groups, I have them sent over to the aux send A and aux send B, you'll see that the LEDs reset to the setting of those different aux sends. So the A send is closed on the base, which is the first one, and it's open on the fourth one. Uh, we're going to send the mallets on the fourth channel into that beat repeater, which they've been going through. And you can send any other part that you'd like to just by using the aux sends. Okay, and that's just one encoder group. You can also turn um, the deconstruct on and off if you'd like to by using the push function. Okay, so that's the, uh, the use of the encoder groups. They're actually quite flexible. Um, and then using, like I said before, using the 32 different presets is going to allow you, say I had 16 channels here. If I switch to the second preset, these faders would automatically move to the settings for those channels, which is another great function of this. So that was the Behringer BCF2000. Thank you for watching GearWire.com. My name is Jake Kuhn, and we'll see you next time.